All right, y'all. So finally getting this video out. This is my man John. Shout out to my man John for showing up at 6:30 in the morning just to do this cut. You can tell he's looking mad about it, but he uh, he needed this cut. John gets the shadow fade with the come over on top. So what I'm gonna start doing with the Andis Master? I've got the guard all the way open, and I'm going all the way around his head, creating uh, my first guideline at the bottom part of the fade. Now this is going to go real fast but don't have any fear. When it gets into the fading part, I'm going to slow it down and you're going to be able to see what I'm doing. But right now I'm just removing the bulk, uh, taking you know the hair off all the way around, creating this fade, making sure it's even. Then I slap the one guard on, I've got it all the way open, and I'm creating my first guideline. So mega fast all the way around, just creating the bar, making sure that it's even all the way around. So I know what to do next. And I switch to my zero guard, right? And I start fading this line out first. I'm using the left three teeth and the right three teeth um, to fade with. And I slow down so you can see when I bump the lever open. I'm going just a little bit higher than I was when I was taking out the initial guideline. Now I'm going to open it up a little more and then I'm going to go a little bit higher. There's definitely going to be time for touch-ups and all that. This is just how I fade. I do one side, then I do the other side, and then I bring it together in the back. So you'll be able to see that. And this is me with the guard open, zero guard all the way open. I'm uh, going up and down, just touching up the little spots. Now I'm closed all the way again. So I'm only working on that line. Now I bump it open just a little bit to the next lever, comb the hair away so that way I can see my line clearly, I can tell what I'm doing, and I'm using the right three teeth just to pick at that line, and you can kind of see it going away. Just pick, 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 pick. Bump it open again, and when I go up, um, you know, sometimes I can, I want to make sure that I'm going against the grain, so sometimes I have to go at like different angles and stuff like that, depending on how the hair is laying. So you'll notice that. Now I'm going all the way up and definitely flicking out at the very top because that helps with the transition on the fade. I know you can't really tell there's a flick out, but I promise there is. Now I'm doing the same thing using those teeth on the end. I'm going to touch up some stuff down here while I got a second. But I'm all the way closed. Well, now I'm open just a little bit more. I'm just working that line out. Every time I hit the lever, I go up just a little further. All the way open. And I kind of seesaw. Like while I'm going to the right, I use the right three teeth. When I start going to the left, I use the left three teeth. And then when I see spots, I start hitting different angles again on the 45 and the touch up. Now I wet the top of the hair and comb it over because it, it kind of lays it, it gets it out of the way. It separates the hair that I'm fading from the hair that I'll be shear cutting. And I use my Vincent Carbon Comb to create the natural part. Like I don't actually create a part. I find uh, their natural... I go to the spiral. and uh, Excuse me, I go to the swirl in the back of the head. And it shows you where the part is. So this is number two guard all the way open. I'm creating my guideline using my comb to separate the long hair from the short hair. And again, I'm going fast because that's all I'm doing is creating the guideline. Now I've got my one guard all the way closed, knocking out that bottom line. Bump up just a little bit. Keep going at it. Going back down a little bit. So that means I'm going to go back down because I see some stuff that's not disappearing. So now I can go back up to where I need to go. And again, if you're worried about will I ever be able to fade, that was one of my things. I was like, man, I'm never going to be able to fade. I'm never going to learn this. But it's just not true. Uh, it comes with repetition. And I definitely want to be a lot better than I am, for sure. Um, I would say I'm mediocre to average. But uh, most of my clients are happy with the cuts that they get. I don't get a lot of complaints. Um, if I make mistakes, I fix them. Right now I'm using the same formula to fade the beard in. And I'm not really pushing the clipper up against his face. Um, that's one thing that I learned the hard way. I couldn't really, like, the beard is a place where I don't want to put hard lines in. And then going with the grain, like I just did, helps. So, um, basically I'm fading the exact same way like I did last time. 
So now I wet all the hair, right? And just, just a basic shear cut. Point cut and make sure everything's even all the way across. There's nothing uh, crazy about it. You can see I'm holding the comb in the same hair that I'm, I hold the comb in the same hand that I hold the hair with. Um, and just make sure that it's all even. Comb it forward. Then I detail around the silhouette because it's all about the silhouette. You really want to make sure that they've got a strong silhouette. And then I use my thinning shears um, and I do about three clips just to kind of blend blend it over to where it looks nice. If that makes any sense. straight hairs off of his forehead because a lot of people have random hairs that grow down on their forehead I'm not creating some kind of crazy line but as I come around to his um, temple peak uh, area I definitely do want to have a definitive line there but I don't go up into his hairline too much I like to keep it as natural as possible Little clipper over comb action there just to kind of get some of the strays that are in my way out of there and I'm gonna work on a C cup and the way I start I use guidelines for everything I put one guideline on top one guideline on the sides and then I just kind of connect the dots I've got two lines that I know I need to make meet up so I'm really just connecting them I'm using my my uh, I trim it like a pencil and I do my real detailing with the razor. Adjust the camera. Using the corner of my blade. Holding down the ears was something that I struggled with, and I'm just now learning how to really push it down and how to pull the ear out of the way and how to function, guys. If you guys are feeling uh, iffy and feeling weird about going around people's ears, it's normal. It will come with time. Please do not give yourself a hard time because you're not comfortable with it yet. It takes time and repetition. That's what I'm finding with everything about cutting hair. It takes time and repetition. Do it, do it, do it. I did uh, 26 cuts the other day and they were all back to back and what I realized at the end of it was by the time I got to that last cut bro I was fade the fades were on point I didn't have time to think about everything because it was only two barbers in the shop and um, they were just it was really getting intuitive and that's just something that you know seems to happen I'm going back touching up I see a little bit of a dark spot um, coming up next to his part so I want to make sure I get that nice and clean I'm going to hit the taper. I like these arch tapers. I don't know why. It's just my personal preference. Start balding out on an arch. And then just uh, create a, you know what I'm saying? Uh, it allows the outside lines to show better. So exactly like you fade everything else, just notch at a time and go just a little bit higher. Again, this is personal preference. A lot of people don't like the arch tapers. A lot of clients don't like arch tapers. That's ultimately the most important thing is what does your client want? But I think it's a modern look. I think it gives a lot more definition to the taper. And it's just a personal preference of mine. And John definitely likes it as well. So coming back under. Giving him a nice straight line on his beard. Look, if you're not reclining your clients to do their beard, uh, I don't know, man. It's Shout out Tomb45. You already know Tomb Squad in the building. Um, but reclining your clients to do the razor work, at least a, a minimum recline. If you have a headrest, um, utilize that thing. If you don't have it, I know a lot of people don't have chairs that work like that. A lot of people are working out of salon chairs. But if you have the option, you need to be making that happen. I guarantee uh, your clientele uh, acquisition and retention will go up. Now you see I removed the gel um, to make sure that the line was actually there because a lot of times if you leave the gel there and then wipe it off the line won't be as definitive but um that's the uh, tune 45 razor there'll be links to everything that i'm using the vincent comb the tune 45 uh razor the shave gel i'll put all that all those links in the description so you can check that out
and I'm using Jay Ramos um, pomade. He sent this to me. Let me try it out. I definitely liked it. Uh, feel free to check that out. Again, I'm going to put a link in the description. It's good stuff. It smells good. Um, so yeah, don't hesitate to use it. I use the spaced apart teeth on the comb only to distribute the product through the hair. Then I go to the thin teeth to really put that finished look on it. And I always make that second hand follow behind. Like that second hand, has, that uh, the other hand has its own job. And sometimes if the pomade's too stiff, if it's water-based like his is, add a little bit of water, put it exactly like you want it, and bam, there you go. That's the finished product. My man John, looking good. Liking it.